Amazingly, the whole history of Israel in the Old Testament is a complete prefigurement for the entire history of the Catholic Church, right up to our present day, in great detail and in chronological order. For a short 9-minute summary video that demonstrates this amazing act of God, watch this video. For a deeper look into these parallels, see our YouTube channel, Maccabean Uprising, and also visit our webpage at www.maccabeanuprising.com. Before we examine the seven kings found in the 13th and 17th chapters of the book of the Apocalypse, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history from start to finish is completely contained in the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. If the old prefigures the new, then it makes sense that the entire history of the Catholic Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. Would this prefigurement continue all the way to the end of church history? Elevated to the papacy, Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli. He will reign as Pope John the 23rd. This video will build on our last video, entitled, Prophecy of the Seventy Weeks of Years, Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 to 27, which in turn was built upon a previous video, entitled, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured in the Old Testament. The central concept and the keystone on which this video will base its conclusions is the understanding that the abomination of desolation in the books of the Maccabees is a prefigurement for the Novus Ordo Rite. To see how the abomination of desolation is a prefigurement of Novus Ordo, refer to our full-length video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo prefigured in the Old Testament, or refer to our video entitled Vatican II and Novus Ordo prefigured by the books of the Maccabees, short summary. The Maccabean Uprising Project is dedicated to showing how the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament is a chronological and detailed prefigurement of the history of the Catholic Church, all the way up to our present day. If this is true, then these parallels can be very useful and instructive for us. In our last video, we used the parallels between Novus Ordo and the Abomination of Desolation from the Old Testament books of the Maccabees in order to shed light on the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years found in the book of Daniel and as it is fulfilled in the actual history of the Catholic Church. If you haven't already done so, we highly recommend you watch that video first before you continue with this video. From the foundation laid in that video, our last one, we can move on to see how the book of the Apocalypse can be viewed in the light of the fulfillment in church history of the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years from the book of Daniel. This video will seek to identify the seven kings from the 13th and 17th chapters of the book of the Apocalypse and the beast out of the sea to which they form seven heads. Later videos will be dedicated to identifying all three beasts from the Book of the Apocalypse, as well as the two witnesses. 
Like the prophecies found in the book of Daniel, the visions of St. John in the book of the Apocalypse very likely have multiple meanings as well. One of the most common understandings of the symbolisms in the book of the Apocalypse is how they relate to the end of the world and the final passion of the Catholic Church. Here is a very basic and general description of the concept of Apocalypse from Wikipedia. This video uses the traditional Catholic name, the Book of the Apocalypse. However, another name that is used often by others is the Book of Revelation. From Wikipedia, an apocalypse, from the ancient Greek apocalypsis, literally meaning an uncovering, is a disclosure of knowledge or revelation. In religious contexts, it is usually a disclosure of something hidden, a vision of heavenly secrets that can make sense of earthly realities. In the book of Revelation, Greek Apocalypsis Iwano, literally John's Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, the revelation which John receives is that of the ultimate victory of good over evil at the end of the present age. The relevant verses for this video from the book of the Apocalypse are split up between thir three different chapters. We encourage you to read the whole text in order to obtain the proper context of these selected verses. However, so as not to lose our direction in this video, we will focus our attention on just two entities in these chapters, namely the beast out of the sea, the second beast of the Apocalypse, and God's people the woman and the saints, as they are called in the book of the Apocalypse. The following verses from the book of the Apocalypse are taken from the Dewey Reams Bible. From chapter 12, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, that there they should feed her a thousand two hundred and sixty days. And there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, who is called the devil, and Satan, who seduceth, seduceth the whole world, and he was cast unto the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven, saying, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, because the accuser of our brethren is cast forth, who accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you that dwell therein. Woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil is come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man-child. And there were given to the woman two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly away into the desert unto her place, for she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. From chapter 13 And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten diadems, and upon his heads names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his own strength and great power. And I saw one of his heads as it were slain to death, and his death's wound was healed. And all the earth was in admiration after the beast. And they adored the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they adored the beast, saying, Who is like to the beast? 
and who shall be able to fight with him? And there was given to him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies, and power was given to him for two and forty months. And he opened his mouth unto blasphemies against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over every tribe, and people, and tongue, and nation. And all that dwell upon the earth adored him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, which was slain from the beginning of the world. Chapter 17 And the angel said to me, Why dost thou wonder? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast which carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which thou sawest was, and is not, and shall come up out of the bottomless pit, and go into destruction. And the inhabitants of the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, shall wonder, seeing the beast that was, and is not. And here is the understanding that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, upon which the woman sitteth, and they are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he is come, he must remain a short time. In these verses are various periods of time that transpire in which the woman is fed in the desert. This is done for 1,260 days. The woman is given eagle's wings, and she flees to the, de the desert where she is fed for a time, times and a half time. And the beast out of the sea with seven heads, whom is given power to overcome the saints, and power was given to him for 42 months. Upon examination, we can determine that all three of these various periods of time describe the same amount of time, but just in different ways. 1,260 days is the same as 42 months, which is the same as a time, time, and a, times and a half, or three and a half times. If we compare these various times to the final week in the book of Daniel, we can see that they coincide exactly. For the first half of the week, the woman is fed and protected from the dragon. In the last half of the week, the beast is given power to overcome God's saints. Thus, at a preliminary glance, this would seem to imply that, because in the 70 weeks of years prophecy, the Novus Ordo appears midweek, and because in the book of the Apocalypse, the woman is fed for three and a half times, but the beast has power over the saints for three and a half times, then the event that occurred that gave the beast power over the saints is the universal implementation of Novus Ordo on November 28, 1971. Also, that would explain why the woman was only fed for the first half of the week, but not for the second half of the week because her heavenly food was taken away. The Tridentine Mass was taken away. But let's just hold on to that thought for a minute and examine the event that starts the final week, the signing of the Lateran Treaty on February 11, 1929. If you recall, prior to the signing of the Lateran Treaty by Pope Pius XI and Mussolini, the Vatican was completely without land or property since the complete spoliation of the Papal States in 1870. The Kingdom of Italy confiscated all the land of the Church, even the very land that the Popes were residing on between 1870 and 1929 was owned by the Kingdom of Italy. However, with the signing of the Lateran Treaty in 1929, the Church was given some of her land back. The treaty established a completely new situation in which the church was given Vatican City to rule over, and the form of government would be that of a sacerdotal monarchy. 
That means that the Vatican City would be legally ruled over by a priest king. For the first time since the confiscation of the Papal States, the popes were kings again, kings of the brand new entity called Vatican City. Here is an excerpt from Wikipedia. Vatican City, officially Vatican City State or the State of Vatican City, is a country located within the city of Rome. It is an ecclesiastical or sacerdotal monarchical state, a type of theocracy ruled by the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. The independent city-state, on the other hand, came into existence in 1929 by the Lateran Treaty between the Holy See and Italy, which spoke of it as a new creation, not as a vestige of the much larger papal states that existed from 756 AD to 1870 AD, which had previously encompassed much of central Italy. According to the terms of the treaty, the Holy See has full ownership exclusive dominion, and sovereign authority and jurisdiction over the city-state. Therefore, Vatican City saw its first king as soon as the ink dried on the Lateran Treaty. That new king was the priest king, Pope Pius XI. This occurred on February 11, 1929. Going forward, we can count six more kings of Vatican City. All of them were ordained as priests in the traditional Latin rite, and therefore all of them were priest kings. Benedict XVI was the seventh of these kings, and he resigned on February 11, 2013. And then the Vatican was struck twice by lightning on the same day. This event was captured on video and was covered by most all of the major news networks of the world. The world saw this lightning strike on the resignation day of Benedict XVI as some kind of a sign from God. Before we go any further, let's refresh our focus and reread the portions of the Book of the Apocalypse that describe the beast out of the sea with seven heads. From chapter 13, And I saw one of his heads, as it were slain to death, and his death's wound was healed, and all the earth was in admiration after the beast. In chapter 17, The beast which thou sawest was and is not, and shall come up out of the bottomless pit and go into destruction. And the inhabitants of the earth whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, shall wonder, seeing the beast that was and is not. And here is the understanding that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, upon which the woman sitteth, and they are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he is come, he must remain a short time. In looking at these seven priest kings of Vatican City, there is one of them that was wounded in what would have been a fatal wound. John Paul II was shot twice in the stomach at close range. However, his wounds were healed. He received much admiration for his healing and for many other actions and teachings during his reign. John Paul II was, and still is, incredibly popular among those who attend the Novus Ordo Rite. These seven kings are only the heads of the beast. The beast as a whole is yet unidentified. This identification might seem somewhat arbitrary in this video, but it will become increasingly clear when, in an upcoming video, we examine the other two beasts of the Book of the Apocalypse. But until that video is released, we can note that in 1929, it wasn't just the year in which the Lateran Treaty was signed, it was also the year in which an important speech was given, in which the core ideas of the European Union were articulated for the very first time. That speech was a subtle and quiet birth of the idea of the modern European Union. In September of 1929, 
Aristide Briand, 11-time French Prime Minister, shared his vision for a European Union. From Wikipedia As Foreign Minister, Briand formulated an original proposal for a new economic union of Europe. Described as Briand's Lacarno diplomacy and as an aspect of Franco-German reapproachment, it was his answer to Germany's quick economic recovery and future political power. Briand made his proposals in a speech in favor of a European Union in the League of Nations on September 5, 1929. Briand's plan was never adopted but it suggested an economic framework for developments after World War II that eventually resulted in the European Union. The idea of a European Union grew, and economic agreements were made throughout the decades following 1929. Finally, in 1993, the Maastricht Treaty officially formed the European Union. In 1993, during the reign of John Paul II, the sixth priest king of Vatican City, the European Union finally emerged. The European Union was the first union of Europe since the times of the pagan Roman Empire, in which Europe was united without reference or thought to Jesus Christ and his church. This is the beast that was, and is not, and will be again, and this beast was started in 1929, but didn't fully emerge until five kings were fallen. One was, and one was yet to come. In other words, during the reign of the sixth king, John Paul II. A united pagan Europe was the beast that was in the form of the ancient pagan Roman Empire. It was not because Europe was united in Christendom and it will be again with the emergence of the new pagan European Union, with real kings who sit in Rome. From Wikipedia, the Maastricht Treaty, formerly the Treaty on European Union, undertaken to integrate Europe, was signed on February 7, 1992, by the members of the European Community in Maastricht, Netherlands. On the 9th and 10th of December 1991, the same city hosted the European Council, which drafted the treaty. Upon its entry into force on November 1, 1993, during the Dolores Commission, it created the three pillars structure of the European Union and led to the creation of the single Euro European currency, the Euro. From this evidence, it is incredibly likely that the European Union is the beast out of the sea. Upcoming videos will confirm this even further. Again, please read the entire book of the Apocalypse to get the full context. The book of the Apocalypse is far more mysterious than we can understand or are able to present in a brief video on YouTube. Thus, we can see that the period identified in the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years from the book of Daniel is the same period of time described in the book of the Apocalypse concerning when the beast out of the sea is giving power over God's people. The abomination of desolation spoken of in the book of Daniel is the same event in which the beast gains his power over the saints and the woman ceases to be fed by God. Further, we can identify the head of this beast who was mortally wounded, and his wound was healed. This same priest king is the sixth king, who will reign when the beast emerges from the pit. Finally, the end of the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years is Feb February 11, 2013, which is the day that Benedict XVI resigned as king of Vatican City. This date is the same date in which the period of the seven kings ended, as Benedict was the seventh priest king of Vatican City. In a future video, we will examine the other two beasts in the Book of the Apocalypse, namely the Red Dragon and the Two-Horned White Lamb. Francis will be included in a future video, 
as are other people and events that transpired after the resignation of Benedict XVI. We will show in a later video how the interpretation of these visions points to Antichrist. We would just like to point out that this interpretation of the vision of the beast out of the sea and the seven kings is distinctly Catholic. It exposes the Novus Ordo and points to the Tridentine Mass and the traditional Catholic faith. Since the Bible is really a Catholic book, it would make sense that possible meanings of the symbols in the book of the Apocalypse directly relate to the traditional Catholic faith of the ages. Please stay tuned, for there is much more to come. <laughs>